Hello, this is Trisha here at Club Scrap with another edition of our uh, assembly line scrapbooking with the Seabreeze page kit from July of 2018. Um, I've got my instructions printed, I've got my kit handy. The kit came with some gorgeous ribbon. We found this new um, style of grill grain with a curved edge. It's very, very beautiful. And we have a double-faced satin, of course. And um, there's a beautiful roll of, we're calling it Wave Washi Tape. It has a metallic gold sheen to it. It's very, very beautiful. Um, there's an awesome um, You Are Here woodcut with a starfish on the top. And speaking of starfish, we also have some actual um, dyed starfish. Um, these are really fragile. I've only used three of the five that you'll receive, um, just in case there might be breakage during transit. Um, you've got your photo mats. Um, how about we go ahead and file those photo mats as we get started here. I've got my um, accordion pocket file. And again, for those of you who are new to Club Scrap, if you haven't uh, found the video to make your own accordion pocket file quite yet, um, please let us know. We'll help you find a link to the video and the assembly instructions that's included if you are a Club Scrap member. All right, so these photo mats, I always find they, where they will be located when I look at the instructions. Um, I see that we need three pale green mats. And these are nice, heavy, heavy cardstock. This is going to be used in layouts one and two. Then we have three turquoise photo mats. Those are used in layouts three and four, so I'll just file those in my pockets. Um, one pale blue photo mat in layout five and six, two pale blue, and three slate. All of these are used in um, seven and eight. Okay, so that's the sorting required for that. The next thing I usually do is get my papers in order according to how they're trimmed. Um, we're going to begin by actually cutting this, but not with a paper trimmer. So we'll set that aside first. I'm just going to build a pile. We'll be using what we're calling the swirl print. That will be trimmed next. And then look for one turquoise plane, one olive plane. Make sure you just grab one of everything. And then we're going to find our cut apart. So we'll begin maybe doing the border strips first. Put those in my pile. And then the other sheet of cut aparts on an off white paper. And finally, I sort out the remaining papers in order from the base for la uh, layout eight all the way to layout one. So I'll start out with a pale blue plane. We'll be next to my pile. A turquoise plane, an olive plane. Here's, I'm calling this the rope print. The other pale blue plane will be next. The other swirl print. And then two slate planes are the very, very last to be used, but those are the bases for layouts one and two. I've got my trimmer out and ready here, but I'm gonna swap this out for a cutting mat and a craft knife. I'm using Club Scrap's awesome 13 by 13 inch um, cutting mat. It's perfect for scrapbooking. We've sized it just for you in this pretty color of blue. And I've got a craft knife here with a fresh blade. And so I'm gonna begin by cutting along the edges of the rope lines right on this print. Using my right hand, I will start away from me and bring the knife toward me carefully as I just go along the edge of the line there. Now it made that so easy is the fact that I'm using a nice fresh blade um, and holding it like a pencil. Now I'll rotate, I'm gonna bring it toward me again to remove the other portion of this area. Nice. Okay, now what we've done is created three pieces. What I what I want to do is hide any you know any areas where there may be a little bit of that um, driftwood still on the rope print and vice versa. And the way to do that is just to simply take a sandstone ink pad. This is one of I never expected to love this color as much as I do because the sandstone you know, it's very, very soft and pale, but that comes in handy in a situation like this where I just want to warm up the edges a little bit. And that just looks really good. I'm going to do the same thing on this driftwood portion. Just ink the edges. Normally I like to rest this on the edge of the table just for stability as I apply the ink directly from the pad to the paper. And then I'm also going to do it on the final, third and final piece. Okay, we'll set this aside and get my trimmer back in place so we can cut the rest of the papers and get these filed. 
According to my instructions, it looks like the narrower piece of this print is used in layouts one and two, and the curvy driftwood portion also in one and two, and then the larger uh, remaining piece is in, used in five and six. Okay, next I'll grab this um, swirly print with the sea glass on it, and we're going to put this into the trimmer so that the bottle that's on this print is in the lower left corner and we'll cut this at four and a half inches. We're basically isolating the, the bottle. Both pieces, however, I used in layouts seven and eight. If you don't have the accordion pocket file, don't worry about it. Just create four separate piles, one for each double page spread. Next, I'll trim the turquoise print a whole bunch of times. The first number we've got is 11 and a quarter. Then nine and three quarters. Let those pieces pile up as we trim. Don't move things around. Then eight and five and three quarters. All right, I'm going to take this piece in the trimmer that's in the trimmer right now and rotate it so it's horizontal. And we'll cut at eleven and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Now gather up the three rectangles you just made. They should all be the same size, and they get filed into five and six. Believe it or not, this narrow piece right here is used in layout seven and eight. Pick up the next piece, and this one should be, if you haven't moved things around, it should be two and a quarter. We're going to file this in the pocket for three and four. Then the very next piece should be one and three quarters inch wide. We're going to trim this horizontally at nine and a half, and that will make sense to you a little bit later. We'll file this longer section into five and six, and this is actually a scrap. I'm sure you could maybe find a home for it, but I just didn't. <laughs> and then we've got this remaining wider strip that goes in three and four, a very narrow strip, seven and eight. Okay, then let's take our olive plane. This is such a beautiful color. A um, couple of cuts here. We'll start out 11 and a quarter again. That was 11 and a quarter. Then 10. 7. And 4. Rotate this 4 by 12, and we'll cut it horizontally at 6. Stack the two rectangles you just made, they're both four by six inches, and file them in three and four, and pick up the next strip. Now there are two three by 12 strips here. Just take one of them, and we'll cut it at eight and four. Take two of these rectangles, they're all, they're all the same size, to take two of them and file them in one and two, and then one of them goes in five and six. Take the other three by 12, we're going to trim this one differently. I think we start at 11 and a quarter, nine and a half, seven and a quarter, and four. They're all different sizes. This large four inch piece goes in seven and eight. And the next three pieces will go in three and four. There should be a narrow, tiny little piece that goes in your scrap pile. Moving on to the cut aparts. I always like to start out with the border strips. I feel like they're the easiest. And we'll work away from the narrowest end over to the uh, wider side on the left. So let's have those the sea glass border on the right. And um, I'm just going to look for those tiny little registration marks on the top and bottom edges of the cut apart sheet, line it up with the edge of my blade and slice. That first cut though is at about 10 and 3 quarters inches. Now we have some narrow strips with dots. And make your way down to the end for the rest of the piece to separate each element. All right, let's file all of these pieces. This wide one goes in seven and eight. Oh, it looks like I forgot a few olive pieces. My apologies. I'll go back to those and, and file them in a moment. Um, this memories piece, three and four. Then we have some starfish, one and two. The happiness strip, one and two. You are the star of the show, one and two. Both polka dot border strips, seven and eight. And then we have this long strip um, of sea glass, three and four. 
and I will help you file those remaining olive pieces. The wider one on the top of your pile, if it's still there, goes in one and two. And then the narrowest piece goes in seven and eight. All right, back to the final cut apart now. Um, I'm gonna begin with the words sea breezes in the upper right corner and separate this piece into strips and work my way this way. Be very careful when moving down to the next piece. Even though there's a mark here for trimming, be careful because if you just trim that, you'd cut through the other pieces of artwork on the strip. This um, journaling prompt and little quote goes on five and six. And then this one with the lantern, three and four. Okay, find our treasures, one and two. The um, horizontal journaling prompt, one and two. The vertical journaling prompt, five and six. And then this image with the shells, one and two. All right, our journaling prompt with our shell, seven and eight. Starfish three and four. Seashells and salty waves, three and four. And then this piece needs to be separated. Tranquility, seven and eight. Joy, one and two. One last strip. This larger piece will go into five and six. And the word piece, three and four. That concludes all the trimming required for all eight layouts and these my friends are your scraps so if you do want to find a home for them <laughs> um, I'm sure you could all right let's move on to our dry fit phase of our assembly I've taken everything out of the pocket for layout seven and eight and set it aside and now I have the base of layout number eight in front of me and then I'm also going to consult the the image and my instructions for layout seven and eight, which will be on the bottom of pages three and four, or I'm sorry, on the bottom of page four. And um, we'll begin with the right side here. So look at the right side of the layout and let's find our little pieces. And I'll give you some assembly tips along the way. Um, we'll begin by placing this along the right edge of the right page. And then follow that with the turquoise strip. And then there should be a polka dot strip that has um, some pale blue dots on it. Oh, that's already super, super sweet. Then I did use a piece of this double face satin going across the entire thing. I made a three part bow for the page, which I'll show you in a minute, but I'm not going to spend time making the bow at this time. I've demonstrated that quite a few times, so I'm sure you can look back to previous uh, demos of the three part bow. Now I've got some vertical photo mats here and then if you look, the olive uh, piece will nest perfectly with my shell. And then I just took this beautiful um, stylish grill grain and wrapped it around in a bow on this and then tucked it right behind here. Finally, um, the bottom portion of this will get, be completed with this larger border strip that has a spot for two smaller pictures. Then I'm going to slide over the next piece of paper in my stack which gives me the turquoise for a base and once again we're using the other uh, larger portion of this print flush with the bottom edge of the page and then I'll transition with some olive and some polka dot so this kind of matches what we did on the other side and then at the top oh I here's a tip huh. if I bring this down just a hair then I will have a really good space for my woodcut page title there on the left. I'm using the pale blue photo mats horizontally here and balancing what's happening on the right side with another vertical slate on the left. Now there's this long strip and what I did here is I cut a little V into each end. Now if you really want to get particular about it you can use the 45 degree angle on your grid ruler to create them, but it's pretty good for an eyeball. Um, this will um, go down at the bottom, and then you can also take a piece of this beautiful olive ribbon. This sort of balances out the olive paper we're using, and then put that behind there. I taped it, and then attached the word tranquility with um, some foam adhesive to give it a little bit of height. So to take a look at the finished pages, here's our three-part bow and another sweet bow up here with the olive ribbon. 
And here we have our title with the woodcut and then this um, really sweet little finishing touch at the bottom edge here. Very lovely and easy set pair of layouts. Let's set these aside and move on to the next two. Remove all the contents of pocket five and six and slide over your um, olive um, base. This is going to be the base for layout six. And I'm going to be looking for my three turquoise mats that are all the same size. And one of the things I really like to do with this is use my grid ruler with its zero center to help place these three photo mats. When I adhered my pieces, these are the three I started with. And once they were all in place and evenly spaced, and if for my really super duper type A's out there, the spacing between everything is 3 sixteenths of an inch and it works like a charm. Okay, so then this will be placed flush, the straight edge of the curved piece flush with the right edge of the layout. And then um, after tying a little, just a little bow with the olive ribbon around this piece, it will slide nicely and fit perfectly right behind. So before adhering this completely, just always plan you know, where your adhesive will go and when so that you don't paint yourself into a corner, so to speak. <laughs> okay, then the other half of this page is balanced with the other rope print. I did one of my little tricks here that I do quite commonly. I start out by place marking where everything is going to live. And if you do it very carefully according to the uh, finished image I provided, what you'll have is the opportunity to make a small cut into the rope so that this piece slides beneath and then another cut along the edge of the rope here so this entire journaling prompt slides beneath the rope. And um, I finished all of that with the placement of a little um, starfish and what you can do is use our book binding glue with the needle tip applicator to um, adhere the starfish. And I just picked the flattest side of the starfish for um, adhering. Okay, let's set that aside and take a look at the finished pair of pages. Here we have our um, sweet little bow and um, the curved edge here with this slid behind. We just take a glance now at the other layout. We'll flip it over and look at what happened on the back. Do you see my little cuts? And then this has been slid underneath. Even in the lower right corner of this piece, I made sure it's, I made a slit and then tucked it beneath the rope. And it just kind of gives it a nice special touch and allows the beauty of the background to, to remain in the foreground, but still um, the photo will be center stage. That was five and six. Three and four has a nice clever assembly, on, especially on the right side. I like how this came together. We've got a nested border strip at the bottom and the top. So I guess I'll start there. So this has a mate, match them up, place that at the top. And then what's gonna de dictate your space here will be the placement of two of these turquoise photo mats. So essentially, once those were adhered, pretty much center, I moved, well, I guess it's gonna have to go down just a little bit this way toward the bottom. And my spacing between each element will be consistent. Then, I love this part. So we have some cut-aparts here, the word peace, and we have a starfish, and we have the seashells quote. Now if you look, this olive piece matches. This olive piece fits there. And this olive piece fits right here. And one of the fun things I did with this ribbon is, if you just take a little piece of it, once this is adhered, you can wrap the satin around and then tape the ends on the back, and it gives it a really nice, sweet touch. Lastly, take some of the um, washi tape and then run it across the top of the paper, the very final thing. So as you're adhering, make sure you leave enough space at the top for the tape to be positioned. Okay, so for the other half of this page, oh, I had so much fun with this, I can't wait to show you. Okay, so we have this message in a bottle print, swirl print here take the nestable here. We've got a nice big cut apart. It's nesting onto a photo mat. That's kind of going to be a feature here. And that ends up living slightly underneath the edge of the bottle. And then we'll finish just simply two horizontal olive mats. But what makes this page special is the way I was able to add um, some ribbon to the lower left corner. And for that, I'm just going to show you the finished layouts. So again, here's my page on the right with the washi tape and the satin ribbon wrapped corners. It just adds such a nice sweet touch to that. On the left page, 
um, check out what I did here. And I made a pencil mark just to note where the edge of this was going to come in and bring it behind the bottle. So you can see that coming out this way. And then on either side of the neck of the bottle so I could thread ribbon through. And when I tied the ribbon, I did it kind of like a necktie tie. So if you're not sure how to make that, um, you can look it up. Any, It's any old necktie. This was the way I think my dad would tie a necktie. I just didn't do it tightly. And then um, I adhered the knot of the tie right to the paper with my book binding glue and a needle tip applicator. It's a cool and sweet finishing touch and I didn't feel the need to do much else with the layout because it just had just the right amount. All right, that was layout three and four. Taking the contents of everything else out of my file folder for one and two and at this point we should be empty and we are safely empty. Okay, for layout two, the slate is at the base of everything, followed by this really funky curvy print that we removed from the rope print. I'm going to place it pretty close to the bottom edge of this layout. And again, when you're adhering things, sort of dry fit everything first so you know the order of placement so that you don't have something stuck down that you need to get to. Um, then I used the starfish border strip vertically to just give it some balance and followed that up with another horizontal strip. So that was the order, except I also added along the edge. Before placing this piece, I did add some washi tape to the right edge of this border strip. Again, that's just, you know, personal preference. Okay, now I have these beautiful uh, soft green photo mats. I'll have a vertical and a horizontal. And then this last cut apart that's going to be attached will slide underneath the curved edge of that print in the background. And um, what my goal was is to have the spacing between here, 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 and all of this to be consistent. So I was very careful to, to place everything before I glued it down. Sliding the remaining piece over. This is the base for layout one. Okay, here, the rope now is on the top, so I have a straight edge right here. And um, so once again, I came in with my washi tape and added a strip of that, which I won't do now. And then um, this will be placed next. Now you are the star of the show, has a little, uh, just it's a great reference to the starfish. So I, I did add a um, actual teal starfish, mini starfish right to this spot. And then if you, have, you should have two three by four inch olive mats that will fit along with this. And once again, just to follow through, along the top edge of this journaling prompt, I added, I will actually add it this time, this piece of washi tape. Just wrap the ends around to the back and you can just tear the tape away. It just works so well. And um, we'll finish with a horizontal mat and a little joy. And all of this should really fit together nice too. So finished layouts here. We've got our curved piece, the inked edges, some washi tape along the edge here. And then, oh yes, I did add two starfishes. Again, looking for the flattest surface, which is determined how, which determined how I attach them to the page. Got our washi tape in there, kind of going off the edge a little bit. So that, my friends, is your Seabreeze page kit assembly. I absolutely love the way these pages came together. I'm sure they'll be very, very useful for life experiences I've had, and I hope you find the same to be true. Have a wonderful summer, and we'll see you next time.